Gotta make sure that Bruce gets his gift, Clark gets his gift, Diane, and that one guy, fish guy, always forget his name. Hey, I thought you said he's gonna be here in like five minutes. Don't worry, I'll be there in a flash. Dude, where you been at? Party's over. What do you mean? How could I miss the party? I got everything. I even got... I even got Batman's favorite hat. How could I miss the party? The party is over. The party over. is over. The party, the party is, over. Over. is over. The party's over. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's up you guys? Sky here from Sky Help. Today we're going to be doing a super speed tutorial and Adobe After Effects. So without further ado, let's zoom right in. Open your video by pressing Ctrl I and drag it into the new composition icon. Go to the point right before your actor is on screen and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then right click the bottom layer, go to time and select freeze frame. Now play the clip until the point where your actor is about to run off. Press Ctrl Shift D to split the clip in two. Continue playing the clip until the subject runs off screen and again, Press Ctrl Shift D to split the clip once more. Go to the beginning of the split clip right before your actor is about to run off. Right click the video and go to time and select time stretch. Reduce the stretch factor down to 80. At this point, we'll mask out our actor frame by frame until they run off the screen. Make sure to keyframe your mask path and feather to around 12. When you are finally finished, go to the effects and presets and type in directional blur and add it to your video. Set the direction to 90 degrees and keyframe the blur length and set it to 200. Then go to the beginning of the split clip and set the blur length to zero. This way your actor gradually gets blurrier instead of it happening all at once. Next, by pressing T, we'll keyframe the opacity to 100%, then move about three frames right before the end of the layer and set it to 79%, and at the very end, we'll set the opacity to zero. After this is done, we'll drag in our lightning effect that I've provided in the description and place it right on top of the edited layer. Move to the point where the lightning first appears and simply press Alt Bracket to trim the video to that point. Now you can make the lightning any color that you want, but for this tutorial, we'll stick to the colors shown in the skit. We'll add a hue and saturation effect to the lightning and change the master hue until it has the right color. Then set the mode to screen and adjust the scale to fit the video. If the video needs to be flipped the other way, go to layer, transform, and flip horizontal. Once you're done with that, press P on the lightning layer and keyframe the position. Move frame by frame and adjust the lightning to the movement of your actor. In my shot, the lightning isn't as long as I wish it to be, so I'll go to time and time stretch to increase the stretch factor, but be careful though. If it is stretched out too much, the video will begin to look less believable, as the frames are just going to look more like steel images the more you stretch them. When you are finally finished moving the position of the lightning, press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer and set the mode to add. Then click Toggle Switch Modes and enable Motion Blur to the lightning layer on the bottom and enable Motion Blur in the composition. On the duplicated layer, adjust the master hue so that the color is darker than the original lightning layer. Next, add the Dust Wave video also provided in the description below and place it underneath the layer your actor was masked out on. Then set the mold to screen and go to the effects and presets and type tint and drag it onto this layer. Select the layer and press Ctrl D twice 
to have three clips of the dust layer. Right now I'm adjusting the position of the dust and trimming it to fit the video. Make sure you do this as well if necessary. Now we'll pre-compose all these layers by pressing Ctrl A and then Ctrl Shift C. Once you've composed your video, go to the point where the first frame of the lightning appears. Drag in the lens clip also provided in the description and place it on top. Right click the video and go to time and select freeze frame. Then set the mode to add. Now go to the effects and presets and type photo filter and drag it onto this layer. Set the density to around 90 and make sure to trim the lens layer to when the first lightning appears. Make sure the lens layer is selected and draw a mask around your actor. Feather it to around 14 and add a glow to it. Set the threshold to around 50, radius to 48, and intensity to 1.4. Then select the lens layer and press P to enable position and keyframing. Play the clip and adjust the position every few frames so that it matches the lightning. Once you are finished, click toggle switch modes and enable motion blur on the bottom layer. Then press Ctrl A and Ctrl Shift C to pre-compose the video once again. At this point, we'll add a camera shake with a special plugin that I've provided in the description below. Go to the point where the lightning first appears and press Ctrl Shift D to split the clip in two. Go to animation presets, after shake, and then drag aftershake footage to the second half of the video. Make sure to be at the beginning of the second clip and keyframe the rotation, amount, and speed. Set the amount to 30 and enable motion blur to the top layer. Press E for effects and open up speed, amount, and rotation. Move the keyframes for speed and rotation a little further than the amount. Now move about 30 frames forward and set the amount to zero. Move back around 8 frames and keyframe the speed and rotation to zero. Right now I'm deleting the blank shot that was on top of the smoke so that the smoke won't be covered up. Make sure that once your actor appears out of the shot, that the only layer that's left is the blank shot at the bottom of the layer. Now go back to the pre-composed comp for it to be pre-composed once more. Select both layers and press Ctrl A and then pre-compose them. Here we will scale up the footage so that there is no black bars after the shake. Go to the beginning of the clip and press S and keyframe the scale. Then go to the first frame you see any black bars and scale up the footage so that they are no longer visible. The very final part is optional. For the last effect, we'll scale up the footage and move the position to follow the actor. This process is very simple and doesn't need any detailed explanation. So that's it. Leave any questions in the comment section below and if this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.